Welcome to today's spotlight. We have something very, very fun for today. This is a 2000 Chevy Corvette and it is boring as hell from the outside, as you can see. It is old man spec to the max, but it's hiding a little secret. Hiding under the rear bumper are twin precision 48 millimeter T04B turbos and they're awesome. It's part of a kit that STS used to offer quite a while ago. Uh, STS, a division of Holly, uh, that was a pre-built kit specifically for C5 Corvettes. Could be applied to either a base model or a Z06. This one is a base model. It's a 5.7 liter LS1, your classic LS platform. Right now, with the way uh, the current setup just straight out of the box, it's just running wastegate pressure. A single wastegate running spring pressure, <laughs> which is good for about six pounds of boost. And that translates into roughly about 500 horsepower or so. Very manageable. The STS designed these kits to be able to just literally slap them on and go. You didn't have to do any major upgrades besides what was included in the kit. The kit came with new injectors, bigger injectors, um, all the intercooler piping, exhaust piping, turbos, obviously, oil feed lines, return lines, etc. Everything was in there. But otherwise, this is a pretty boring aspect Corvette. It's really, uh, this is exactly how it would have come from factory from the outside. You would have no idea <laughs> that it has what it has in it. And that's why we love it. So look at the back of the C5 Corvette. Uh, there is nothing really exciting at the very back that you can see from this angle. However, if you go down a little bit, you will see both turbos sitting right there. The turbos, of course, take place of the mufflers, which we'll talk about a little bit more in our driving sequence. The interesting thing about these turbos as well is how the air filters are connected to it. Uh, of course, there's a pipe that runs up behind the outer rear taillights. So you have to remove the taillights to get at the air filters, which is of course not your usual setup on any car. Uh, some newer cars and I have to remove the front headlights to get at them. But um, yeah, you have to remove the, the rear outer taillights to get at the air filters. So a couple of the nice things with having the turbos hidden down, down in the back of the Corvette is they are really nice and low, obviously. Uh, so they do actually get more airflow as well. They don't get heat soaked by sitting right by the engine. And there isn't as much turbo cool down time just because of that. The only thing that really sucks about being rear mounted is that you don't get the instantaneous uh, turbo spool like you would if they were mounted right beside the engine. There's all the piping from the front of the car to the back to feed those turbos. Sitting inside the vet, uh, very, again, totally stock. So whoever did this build really wanted to keep it as stock looking as possible through and through. And the, uh, you know, the interior is exactly that. It's what you would expect in a little bit of a higher trim base model C5 vet. It, this car does have heads up display, which is really nice and pretty impressive for being 24 years old uh, to have, you know, active heads up display dual zone climate control. It's even got the original radio in it. So very period correct all the way around. The only real thing that you notice that is definitely out of place is the boost gauge and the air fuel ratio gauge that are just kind of hanging out here. The AFR gauge also is a narrow band and doesn't work very well at the moment. Uh, so that could be an upgrade <laughs> in the near future that would be beneficial. However, it's also not running a ton of boost and it's not high strung at all. So, you know, a, if it runs a little bit l to the lean side every so often, it's not gonna be the end of the world. This car does run and drive beautifully. But yeah, otherwise very uh, normal C5 interior, exactly what you'd expect. Bose uh, sound system that actually sounds pretty good. You need it in a convertible and obviously this is a convertible. So this is really nice. These cars are manual top. They are not uh, powered top, which is great uh, for both reliability and weight savings purposes. And yeah, just a really comfortable car, really comfortable seating position. The one thing that gets me, I'll come back to this, it's the steering wheel. I don't know what it was with Chevy and having these gigantic truck steering wheels in these cars. They did it with the C5, the C4 as well, the C6. So the next generation after this, they really only 
uh, fixed it in the C7 and they made them quite a bit more small and it was smaller and compact. The steering can be, can feel a little more sloppy than it actually is just because of how much steering wheel is here to, to have to maneuver. Um, otherwise, yeah, really comfortable car. These have a ton of leg room. They're a big car just in general, especially for being a two seater and just a really, uh, really nice driving experience. This is another kind, another vehicle that I would totally road trip in. And you could very comfortably road trip in this regard with, regardless of the turbos, but also the turbos is a benefit. Um, you know, you might even get a little bit better fuel mileage. All right. Jeffrey behind the wheel. Again. Yeah, again. It feels like I'm always driving. No, we take turns. We, we take turns. We, we take, take turns. turns. Yeah. yeah, we've been good about it. So, I mean, this is a pretty stock car. Uh, except for that, uh, this kit was made to be very, you could just slap it on and go. You know, it wasn't, it didn't have, you didn't have to be doing a whole bunch of huge supporting mod, mods and uh, crazy traction stuff, so um, it still hooks. I mean, first gear is a little, a little loose, but <laughs> otherwise, the rest, rest of the time it's good. Yep, rest of the time it's good. Yeah. And the boost comes on very late. Um, the lag is pretty significant, obviously, given how much piping needs to be pressurized with the turbos at the back. turbos and cleaned air filters. Yes, those were legitimately the worst air filters I have ever seen or yeah. touched. I actually cleaned them. I yeah. had to take them home and soak them in uh, degreaser for a couple days. Turned into a weekend because I forgot about them. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was legitimately the most disgusting turbos. Or sorry, air filters I've ever seen. Yeah, like you could, you could take your finger and scrape grime off of them. I, it just got forgotten, you know, neglected. It is what it is. But we're back in business now, and it is making more power and better power than it ever has before. Yeah, the turbos spool faster. You start to hear them faster. That's really how you know. <laughs> and that's really half of the fun. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for the sound, especially now because it does spool a lot faster, yeah. you just wouldn't know. No. Yeah. It drives around idea. like a normal car. Um, you can tell the clutch is probably a little bit heavier. Yep. The shifting is definitely tightened up. That's true, yeah. Yeah, the shifter uh, shifter feel like it's a stock looking shifter, but it definitely has a shorter throw than stock, so it's likely a uh, just a short throw kit underneath the stock knob. Whoever built this really, really wanted to make it as stock seeming as possible at first glance, and they've achieved it. It looks like the most boring old man Corvette ever, which yeah. is one of my favorite things. It is a complete sleeper until you hear it. Yeah, yeah sleeper Corvette. <laughs> Oxymoron. Oh, LS's with boost. It's just, I don't know that there's anything better. <laughs> Touching the throttle a little bit, just, 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 just a hair, and you don't. That's the thing. You don't have to. Once these turbos get warm, 
they get louder. They get a lot whistlier. Now it is Tanner's turn. Let's do it. Which is actually funny to think of because we have driven this car actually a considerable amount. Yeah, we really have. Uh, I would prefer to drive it more, actually. I could have this car in my garage. Absolutely. I've uh, seriously considered buying this several times, but then we had to buy a house and be responsible and ugh. So, you know, we just get to borrow it now. Yeah. <laughs> That coming from the guy who is legitimately one of the most responsible people I know Aww. when it comes to money. Aww. Well, yeah, but that's no fun. <laughs> Amplified in this platform. LS's love boost. Yeah, well, there's no mufflers anymore either. That too. There's no mufflers, there are turbos. Yeah, where the mufflers used to be. Oh. 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 Man. Got the, the 5 0 up oh. there. Just, just raining on the parade. Maybe we go the long way. Let's go the long way. Yeah, we can go the long way. No, officer, I do not have turbos. This car is not modified. Yeah, bone stock. It is Can't stock exhaust. Yeah. yeah, they just... I got those... Sounds extra whistling. sound like it's a V8 I just I, I have with a, turbos so you get the amazing sound I have, a, I have a, a, like permanent smile on my face driving this car all the time I feel like I just look like an idiot like <laughs> but I can't help it. it it's it's just you're you're more of a child in this car though like I said <laughs> that's it I feel like a child driving it yeah yeah like going under under bridges you just kind of have to <laughs> Thank you for joining us today to look at this 2000 C5 Corvette with the STS Twin Turbo Kit on it. Really, really appreciate uh, you tuning in and checking it out. Of course, big thank you to Toro Automotive for letting us take this car out, have an absolute blast with it, uh, burn way too much gas. Uh, again, thank you for watching, really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and check out some of our other videos. Have a great day.